I started Palantir 18 years ago with my roommate from college. And then uh, there were a couple other, few other key people as co-founders, obviously Peter Thiel. Uh, we brought in Alex Karp. You know, Alex was pretending to be the CEO at first for us because we needed an adult in the room. And, the, and then it turned out he was actually a good CEO. He's a philosopher before that. So pretty, mm. pretty cool background. He had, he had a lot of wisdom about people and institutions. The rest of us were computer scientists. And so that, that ended up mixing really well. And you know, what, what, what does Palantir do? Palantir, the, the high level goal of Palantir was to take the top technology cultures of Silicon Valley and apply it to the most important problems in Washington, D.C. on the East Coast institutions. And so the, the idea, the idea was there's like this hundred billion dollars plus being spent on various types of data and services around important problems with, you know, analysts and in intelligence defense world that the problems there as well as for big companies. And we wanted to be able to say, okay, some of these things rather than being services could actually be done with products out of the box. And so we looked at like 50 government contracting, you know, mess ups where they spent between 50 million and a few billion dollars on these big projects. And they, these things always went over budget. They always went over time. Uh, they never quite solved problems as well as they could have. And we said, how can we create a single platform that does most of all these 50 out of the box and solve these really important problems? And then, and you know, how can we make sure we're both protecting civil liberties as well as like bring all the data together in a distributed world and making sure they get the bad guys. Eric himself is a patriot. I've, I've attacked Google in the past for not being a patriotic company. I'll stand behind that. It comes from a university culture that's very globalist, very skeptical of our military, not very patriotic, it's very, you know, not, 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 not very pro there. But I think Eric Schmidt himself, I think some of the people around Google, I think some of the alphabet guys, they, ha they have done some good stuff there. Uh, that, that, that said, you're right. Most of Silicon Valley, ironically, does not engage with defense. Of course, you, you know, I'm sure, obviously, Silicon Valley started off by engaging with defense. That's where yeah. a lot of Hewlett Packard and everyone came from. And we lost that for a while. And then this is why we started Palantir. It's also why we started a couple other companies more recently. There's a huge gap between what's possible in the defense world and what you're seeing in the defense world. You're, you're just, you're not getting the top technologists in the defense world to tackle these problems. And this is what you do as a venture capitalist is what you do as an entrepreneur. You look for gaps in the world. You look for things that are like really broken compared to what they could be. And, and sadly, our defense has gotten really broken in a lot of areas because there's no one else is there. That's why Palantir was able to be such a big company. Like no one wants to work with Palantir when you show up, when, when you're like a bunch of 22, 23 year old kids from Silicon Valley, you didn't serve in the military. You're not from their culture. You're not about, you haven't hired like 22 generals to your company. Like they'd much rather work with the guys they know. So the only way you're going to win is you have to be like 10 times better. It's the only way you're going to mm. be able to do it, but you can be 10 times better because Silicon Valley has gotten to be so far ahead of the East coast. And so this is, that's why it's like, it's a great business opportunity. It's also critical for our country to get talent working on these problems, especially in a world where China is obviously going to be saber rattling. I think the best hope for peace in the world is for China to realize that we're still innovating and that they're not getting ahead of us in defense. If they think they're ahead of us in defense and can make a fool of us, they're going to be very tempted to do so.